What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Uh, thank you to everyone who was able uh, to come out uh, to Tom's service. That was, uh, was very nice. Got to meet some of you as well. I thought that was very good. And even if you weren't able to make it, thank you so much for all the support you've been showing us online. Uh, it has been extraordinarily touching, especially the emails. Really deeply appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. This you know, kind of mixed right now at least. You have the composite down a little bit. I think you have some of the semiconductors off. It's kind of driving that down. The Dow Jones Industrial though, still moving up, making all time highs again today after pulling back slightly from that there. If the DXY about 0.55%, 105.52. So some really strong movement uh, to the upside there. Looking to get that 106 uh, kind of high. We had at least, uh, you know, what is that? Around like April. Uh, crude oil getting sold off of about 3.17% on some kind of demand fears with it. Uh, the E-mini flat right now. Uh, we're still moving, making all-time highs again today, and then pull back slightly after. Now, gold and the metals in <laughs> kind of in general um, are getting cooked. Now, it's interesting to see silver, you know, not coming off as strongly. Usually, the movement in, in gold, right, that you have that gets magnified uh, in silver, uh, we're off roughly the same. Actually, gold's down a little bit, off about 2.46% right now, trading at 2,628 on that Ford contract. Uh, some decent volume coming out of that. You have copper off about 1.51%, trading at $4.24 on that contract. And then the futures for silver are down at 2.14%, trading at 3077 I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Well, you know, one, there is so much exuberance in this in this market and the metals weren't really doing it, right? So you kind of get that exit position, right? Maybe you get some people who are taking that money, get into something else, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm also wondering, is this the first time that we're actually seeing Bitcoin meaningfully compete with things like gold, right? I mean, you have this conversation, Bitcoin hit $86,000. This is unbelievable. And it's been slumbering for, for quite a while, right? Um, this kind of conversation around a potential Bitcoin reserve, right? I mean, that is something that, you know, that store of value against, you know, inflation or whatever it may be, was traditionally what gold was for. So you have something in Bitcoin that is a store of value, or at least is being treated as such, and it moves a lot stronger uh, than, than gold has, at least to the upside you've been seeing. I mean, $86,000 is unreal. Whenever I heard that thing, like you might see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, I was like, "No way, dude!" But it looks like it's getting to that point. I mean, even Dogecoin is out competing. This is a really wild market. I mean, you want to talk more about exuberance? Look at Tesla. I mean, I don't know if this is healthy, right? Like, this is massive volume keeps gapping up, gapping up, gapping up again. Made a high of three hundred fifty eight dollars and sixty four cents, trading up seven point six nine percent since the beginning of this session. And right now at 345.79, so a little bit off that that recent high there, but um, I mean, wow! You had tons of people lose money on Bitcoin shorts as well. Um, that's, this is the kind of reason I get spooked to short this stock. Yeah, hedge funds—they they were shorting Tesla before. They lost more than five billion dollars. Friday's close, yeah took an on-paper hit of at least $5.2 billion, according to Bloomberg. <clears throat> Nuts. You know, there's conversation as well. Um, I mean, you, you have Rivian up too. It, it looks like that maybe Trump isn't going to repeal as many kind of investments in green energy that the Biden administration had made. I mean, we're not up like in the same way. Obviously, Tesla is in Rivian. I mean, we're trading up 4.63%, finally out of those doldrums within the $10 range, right? You know, slipping below that <clears throat> multiple times here. And uh, you're trading up 4.67%. I think Lucid is roaring today. Yeah, up 7.24%. It, it's unbelievable. Disney cracking 100. We have earnings this week, I believe, before the bell on Thursday. So you have a little bit of drive on that. But, you know, now we're getting into stuff. We're getting into prices. We're getting into high volume movements on, you know, no substance with such exuberance that it makes me a little bit cautious now. Like, do we see a pullback from this level? I mean, kind of makes sense, right? You do have healthy volume coming into pound here, right? Comparatively speaking, making all-time highs of $62. 
We're trading at 60.40 right now, up 3.4%. I think you had Ionic kind of come off a little bit today. Of course, I got out of that. But, I mean, this market is just roaring. Yeah, so Ionic's off about 5% today, but still, you would be profitable if you bought at the levels we were, we were talking about with it. You have earnings this week. We have Rocket Lab coming up. And I mean, you know, again, this is 11, 12 percent right now at fifteen dollars and thirteen cents. This is decent volume compared to what it usually trades at, right? Um, obviously, you have some big movements here going to that volume, but we're just so high. It looks like they, if you look at the rest of the industry, I mean, it looks like they might beat. You know, all their competitors kind of beat, which is pretty nuts. The last kind of report in this area. Let's see. Yeah, Ducom delivered a year-on-year -year revenue growth of two point six percent. It's beating analyst expectations of a loss. Curtis Wright, revenue's up 10.3%. That beats, you know, estimates by nearly 5%. So, you know, we might see some big movement here. You just have the market itself just not even caring, right? Like, hey, let's just throw stuff in, especially around earnings. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I was looking at their balance sheet as well. Uh, if I can pull this up. Their, their revenues actually are climbing, you know, pretty decently. Um... They nearly doubled revenues from, you know, June 30th, right? From, you know, I'm, I'm comparing 2024 to 2023. Their cost of revenues have not doubled, which is pretty solid. Operating loss has gotten better. They have more cash. I mean, yeah. So cash equivalents from June 30th, of course, I'm looking at their last quarterly versus December 31st, 2023. You know, you have cash and cash equivalents in December, you know, end of last year at 162 million. Now they're sitting with 340 million. Their total assets have blown up. Their liabilities, their current liabilities, I guess I could say, have not really exploded in any meaningful way. Uh, but the total liabilities have mainly from convertible senior notes. I mean, it's something to keep in mind. But I mean, this Rocket Lab company seems to be in a good spot. You know, you have earnings after the belt today. I might get in, you know, just to play the earnings. Um, you know, during one of the breaks here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're doing well. You have Cisco coming up, which I'm very hyped about. We could talk a little bit about that. I'm going to have Steve Rhodes on next, and then we're also going to have Basil Chapman on halfway through, and we're going to get to Cisco and some of the other things we have earnings looking forward to. Uh, so stay right there. We'll be right back. We had a great uh, rest of the show for you guys.